Good morning. Good morning. Psalms 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, we look out our windows. It is sunny. It is blue skies. But that's not why we're praising the Lord. We're praising the Lord for this day because he made it. Amen. Amen. He knew that you were going to be in the seat that you are today. He brought his family together so that we might be inspired and encouraged together so that his spirit would lead us and that as pastor brings the message from the Bible, we would, we would be encouraged. And when we leave this house, we'll be able to say it was good to be in the sanctuary of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the blessings that we've seen today and the hope that we have tomorrow through Jesus Christ. We invite your spirit to fill this sanctuary. Let your spirit fill up, uh, fall upon us. Heavenly Father, let us focus on Jesus Christ and glorify your name. For we ask these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Oh 
Our responsive reading this morning is entitled Hope and Trust in God, and it's taken from Psalm 25. And uh, Diane will begin with the white, and then you and I will read together in the yellow. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are God, my Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity though it is great. Who then is the man who fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O oh my God. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. in the congregation and I hear the singers because the, the microphones or the speakers are blasting out. It sounds really good. But when you're on the platform, I get to hear you guys. And I bet there are choirs in heaven that are jealous of the, the congregation singing praises to his name. Amen? Amen. 
good, good. Um, I want to let you know, Last uh, yesterday we had the uh, memorial service for Bob Larson, and the family left some flowers here on our altar. They left the flowers for us um, in the lobby, just so we can remember our, br- our friend, our brother, Bob Larson, who we will see again in glory. Amen? Amen. Um, Rod Brace is not only our sound technician, but he also is a baker, and so he brings that bread in every week for us. And so thank you, Rod. He's uh, calling his ministry Grateful Bread. So I didn't make that up. He did couple of announcements if you have your bulletin next uh, mon- next Sunday we start our monthly food drive this month it's going to the salt mine and while there is a Placer County uh, food bank it is the salt mine which does uh, food distribution in our city and so that's where we're raising um, um, our food um, drive for this month in two weeks we're going to have the welcome to Lincoln Community Church Um, membership class. If you're interested in what we do, what we stand for, how we operate at Lincoln Community Church, if there's a desire for you to become a member, Pastor does a wonderful introduction to the church. We will feed you lunch. We'll give you a tour of the facility and you're uh, welcome to join in. And so if you have that little yellow slip, go ahead and put your name, check off welcome class, and then uh, we'll make sure that you get an invitation uh, for next week or for uh, and two weeks. Um, the opportunities to serve are in your bulletin um, every week. Bible studies are starting next week. There's the ladies BSF Bible study next week. The women of the word starting the week after that. And then Wednesday Bible study starting on the 19th on, uh, uh, on Wednesday. And so... Um, Take a look at those, and if maybe the Lord is drawing you toward uh, getting a little deeper in the Word, we have those opportunities for you. If you look on the next to the last page in our bulletin, there are opportunities not only to serve, but there are opportunities to, uh, to minister to others in our congregation. Uh, we want to remember a couple of people in our church family that could use your prayers. We want to tell God, first of all, Praise your name for Carolyn Arduin. She has made it safely. She's made the transition up to Washington State. And uh, while uh, she is up there, uh, 800 miles away, she's still going to be ministering to this church as the leader of our missions committee uh, for a time being. Uh, George Glosh has, uh, has taken a fall this week, and he has cracked his back. The doctor said it is not surgical So he's going to be fitted for a brace. And uh, God bless his wife, Carol. She has not left his side. She's been uh, spending the night there. And so we know that an injury, an illness, never affects just the one person, but the entire family. And so we would pray for George. We would pray for Carol. We would pray for our brother and sister. Amen. We would continue continue to pray for Roger and Mary. Um, Roger and Mary Ann, Georgia Peterson, Margie uh, Bueller as well. And as I've mentioned some of these to you, maybe the Holy Spirit has reminded you of someone in your family, a friend, a neighbor that you'd like to bring forth before the altar of God. And so we're going to ask Jim to play softly and then take just a moment to take that person that the Holy Spirit has put on your mind and and lift a prayer up for them. And then after a moment, give me the opportunity to pray for all of us. Father, as we come before your throne today, we would remember that you are the merciful creator. 
Lord, you've created the heavens and the earth. And you look to us as your sons and daughters. And so, Father God, we would tell you thank you for that. We would tell you thank you for this church that you've brought us to be a part of. And we pray that you would direct our steps and delight in our path this year as we make a difference to the community of Lincoln. We would ask for a blessing upon this offering. Lord, that you would bless the gift and the giver. We would pray, Lord, that you would anoint pastor as he brings your message from your word. So open our eyes, open our hearts, and open our ears that we might listen with a view toward obeying. And Heavenly Father, bless us as we will be able to say when we leave this place, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Bless us for we ask these things in Jesus' most precious, most perfect, most powerful name. Amen. Amen. God be praised. shelter of his love. Well, it's nice to be back. Diane and I had a nice visit down to Southern California to see our kids and grandkids. And, uh, but it is always good to be home. Amen. <laughs> good to see you all this morning. I hope you're all doing well and had good holidays. Well, it's a new year and a new record about things. Before I get into this today, I want to just take a couple moments with you 
because I've had a lot of people ask me with all the news about Omicron, you know, what are we going to be doing here? And I know I've had some people ask, are we going to shut down church? No, we're not. We're going to continue to meet. Um, however, I'm going to tell you, be sensible and careful, okay? And we're doing everything that we can to minimize uh, any problems for people. Um, wash your hands all the time. You know, we got those things out there. Uh, right now, if I don't shake your hand and I bump your elbow, you'll understand why. Because I just want to rib you, you know. Uh, but if you shake hands, uh, use the plungers out there, whatever you call those things, you know, to wash your hands, okay? And uh, if you want to wear a mask, that's perfectly fine. We're not going to insist everybody wear a mask. But I'll tell you, when you go out in public, I wear a mask. I go to the store, I go to Lowe's. Uh, we, we don't really go to restaurants, but when we go out, we don't, we wear masks. I just do it. It's just good, good common sense right now, because I have no idea out there who I'm going to come in contact with. Um, so just, you know, use your head in that way. Um, food, We're, we'll still have the food, but here's the thing. Our ladies are going to serve you. Don't reach in and take it yourself, okay? They'll have gloves on, and they'll serve you. And... Uh, and do me a favor, don't sneeze over it either. <laughs> so we're trying to do what we can. The Omicron is very contagious. I, you know, I, mean, I don't know, the way the news reports it, it's like, gosh, we didn't expect this. Everything I heard when it first came, it, that's what I expected. Now, it has come fast. It's very contagious, but not as severe. But be careful, protect yourself, and protect others. That's what's important. If you're sick, stay home. It's okay. God won't mind if you're not here Sunday morning. But watch it on YouTube, okay? <laughs> okay, God bless you. God, God has been good to us here in our church. Um, we haven't had a lot of, of uh, you know, COVID. Um, I'll share with you this morning. I wasn't going to share this, but I, I think I'll go ahead. We were going to send an email out to you. But uh, some of you know Joanne Kinsey. And uh, she went to the hospital, COVID, and she passed away yesterday. Aww. Yeah. So, you know, it does happen, and uh, uh, it, it, it's really unfortunate. But uh, take care of yourselves, stay healthy, and, and do the things that make sense, and you're, you're going to be fine. And I think most of you have gotten shots. Um, a couple of you haven't gotten boosters yet. I, you go ahead and get the boosters. And, um, and, and you know, if you haven't, haven't had the shots, realize that you could be, potentially somebody could carry it. And I know some of you, there's some good reasons why you haven't, because of certain health issues. But uh, if you haven't, then, you know, when you're around people, just all the more wear a mask. We're, we're all trying to protect each other. Amen? Amen? Now, the last thing I want to share with you. In 2 Timothy 1.7, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. And so that's who we are as a church. And I'm grateful to be here and be with you all. God bless you. And I missed you while I was gone. Okay. Well, I want to talk to you today about a new year and a new record. The new year is an untarnished record awaiting the entry of our living. That record will reveal at the year's end whether we gave life our best or whether we settled for second-rate living. And I hope we never settle for second-rate Christianity here in this place. And what I want to talk to you about today is sharpening the focus of the church. Now, a lot, I, all of you, I, in fact, I got an eye appointment. Well, actually, I just had it, so I, I guess I'm okay, but... You know, you go to the eye appointment and they, they run you through the whole thing and you read that silly chart. Some of you try to memorize it, I know. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, and then they change lenses and everything on it. But it's all about sharpening your focus, okay? Well, God wants to sharpen the focus of his church. And there are several lenses we end up looking through. One of them is what I call the lens of scripture. That's the most important one. You know, how, how do we view our world through scripture? But there are some other lenses that are important, too. There's a lens of history. What's been the history of Christianity? 
How have people managed to work through the word of God and apply it to their lives? And then, of course, then there's the lens of culture. And what a crazy culture we live in today. But this is the culture that God has us living in. So it's like when you go in there, you know how the you know, doctor does. He keeps switching lenses. And so he brings one lens over here, and he brings another lens over here. But eventually, you get a focused vision, right? Hope so, anyway. At least my prescription says that. All right. God wants to bring things into focus for us. Well... Who has known the mind of the Lord, but we have the mind of Christ. And so what does God want for his church? What kind of place does he want us to be? So hang in there. I'm kind of worked up about this. I've got a number of things I want to share with you. What kind of church does God want us to be? And if you take those notes today, I hope you will fill some of these things in. Number one, he wants us to be a God-dependent place. What does that mean? Believing that apart from him, we can't do anything. Amen. Absolutely. And that equates to prayer and trusting God. And we realize that without his presence, without the Holy Spirit's empowerment in our lives, we can't do a thing. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can't do anything. Paul wrote, not that by we are competent in ourselves, but our competence comes from whom? From the Lord. Anything that we are able to do, it comes through his strength, his power. I can do all things. I know a lot of you know this verse. All things through Christ who strengthens me. My grace, and sometimes we feel like we're not, we can't do it. We're not able. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfected in your weakness. And you know what, what the amazing thing is, God sometimes is so happy that we're not, we're just weak at it. Because then he can do it through us and he gets all the glory. E.M. Bounds, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's a wonderful little prayer that affected my life a great deal in the early part of my ministry. It's called Power Through Prayer. If you've never read that book, it's like reading a blast furnace about prayer. Wonderful man of God lived at the near the end of the 19th century. I love something he said. Some churches are so well organized that if the Holy Spirit bowed out, they would keep right on running. I hope that's never said about us. One of the things that Pastor Jody and I talk about oftentimes when we don't have answers for things, well, we don't, we don't know what to do, but God does, and we trust him to show us, and he does, and he will. Well, we're also supposed to be ascending place, declaring Christ wherever, whenever, and to whomever we can. You'll be my witnesses, Jesus said to his disciples in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And they took that very seriously because by chapter 8 in the book of Acts, which is the record of that emerging church, there arose a persecution in Jerusalem. And you know what happened? Everybody scattered. It says, they who scattered, what did they do? They proclaimed, they preached. When it says preach, don't think of it as what I'm doing up here right now. It means they heralded, they proclaimed. They told the word wherever they went. And they ended up actually getting all the way to the north in Syria and Antioch and and that's where the first missions went out from Antioch. And so the people took it seriously. We know that it says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that is in you or that you have. And we're always worried, well, I won't have the words. I won't know how to explain it. I don't know all the verses. I can't do what the pastors do. There's two words I want you to focus on here. Answer and reason. The reason. It's not about having some dissertation or some thought-out presentation. You know what it's about? Just tell your story. Tell people. I like this. Somebody said, evangelism is one beggar telling another beggar how they found bread. Just tell them how you found the bread of life. And I don't mean the stuff that he brings. <laughs> okay. I thought of, that's, that's bracing for bread out there, you know. Uh, but no, tell them how you found Jesus. He said, well, I don't have any spectacular thing, you know. I mean, I was down in the den of iniquity, and somebody came in and rescued me, and I fell all over the ground, and it was just dramatic. No, most of us I can't say that. But you know what? You can tell them. If you can't think about what, how it happened, you can tell them about what's going on right now. How has the Lord made a difference in your life? Just tell them your story. And if, you, if, if they put up the defenses, then don't push it. But, you know, I find most people are willing to listen to your stories. So just tell them your story. Tell them where to find bread, the bread of life. 
Well, we're supposed to be a growing place, too. Now, I don't mean numerically, although that's not a bad thing, but it's about pursuing Christ's likeness every day of our lives. That's the kind of church we should be. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Peter wrote. Speaking the truth in love, Paul wrote, we will grow up into him who is the head, that is, Christ. Be like Jesus. That's, that's our goal, to be like him, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Growing in the knowledge of God equates to bearing fruit, incidentally. It's not just knowing all the verses and being able to give me all the theology. No. Is it, a, is it real in your life? You know, and, and the real way you, you measure maturity and growth is by the fruit of the Spirit. Can you say them with me? What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Thank you, Jesus, that I remembered. <laughs> I know them, but I always... Sometimes get them mixed up in the order so it came out right today. But no, that's, that's maturity. That's, that's what it is to be growing in Christ, is to look like Jesus. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. First John chapter 2, verse 6. I think of the story, I think I've told this before, of an H.M. Stanley, newspaper man, went to find David Livingston, the missionary in, uh, in Africa. And nobody had heard from him for so many years. And so H.M. Stanley, he went out to find him. And, and you know the story. Supposedly when he found him, he said, Dr. Livingston, I presume. Anyway, but he was with Livingston for a while. And this is what he said. He said, he compelled me to become a Christian, and yet he never spoke to me about it at all. The sheer weight of the witness of the man's life was irresistible. Oh, that God would make that said of us here. A trusting place. Trusting Christ and trusting each other. And when I say trust, I mean submission. Now, how do I get from trust to submission? Okay, listen to this. What did Jesus say? He said, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. What does it mean to come to Christ? It means to take his yoke. What's a yoke? That's the thing you know. That's the thing they put on oxen. So that the person that's got the reins can guide the oxen's Life. Now, I know some of us in here are as stubborn as an ox. You know, but we have to let the Lord have the reins, and that's submission. You don't ever come to Christ on your own terms. You understand that? Now, some of us, and I mean, I, I'd throw myself a little bit in this camp, and, and my wife is a little bit this way, too. You know, early on, we had a hunger for God, but, you know, some people go get to God kicking and squirming all the way. We don't get to come, to, okay, I'll come to Jesus if he gives me this. <laughs> it doesn't ever work that way. It's submission to the lordship of Jesus Christ. I throw myself at the foot of the cross. To the cross I come, nothing I bring. Oh, to Jesus, to you I cling. What else? Submit yourselves to God. James wrote this, resist the devil. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Go in the opposite direction. Repentance. Repentance means turn around and go in the other direction. Turn from the devil, turn from sin, and walk towards the light. Submit to one another, too. It also means that we end up submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Listen to your elders. They keep watch over you, and they must give account. Submit yourselves to the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men. Oh, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to preach right now. I'll tell you, this last two years, most unbelievable time in my entire ministry, and I think there isn't a pastor in the United States who won't say the same thing. In fact, a lot of them have left the ministry because of that. And you know, one of the things that has grieved my heart, I don't know if it grieves everybody's heart, but it grieves mine, is to watch the antipathy and the anger and, and just the pigheadedness that I've watched among Christians. 
You know, we want to we want to blast the president. We want to blast the governor. We want to blast everybody that doesn't agree with my way of thinking. Well, I don't agree with everything, but I'll tell you one thing, folks. I agree with God, and what does He tell me to do? I submit to their authority because God put them there. I pray for them. I'll vote for who I want to vote for. I'll write letters, sure. But let's stop this baloney of criticizing constantly instead of praying. Amen. You got it? A trusting place. Now, believe me, I'm not saying just blindly just do everything, you know. So far, they're not sending me to the gallows. They're not putting me in prison. And I still have the freedom to preach, and I still have the freedom to pray, and I still have the freedom to be with you. Okay? I pray. I pray for America, and you should too. That's what we should be doing. Instead of our fists raised up, we ought to be on our knees and with our heads bowed. Amen. All right. So I guess I won't get any more messages from any of you. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to throw this one out too. I remember. This, this, <laughs> you got to find some humor in this whole thing too. All right. I don't know when you're going to get out of here today. I'm pumped. All right. <laughs> Back in 2020, before the election, I remember getting these emails from this one person, and oh, this person went on and on and on. You know, this is a bunch of baloney and da da da. It'll all be gone when the election's over. I haven't heard from that person since. <laughs> no, folks, there's a bigger battle going on in the heavenlies. Put on the full armor of God. Let the word of God be your sword, and let your knees on the ground be your position. Well, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Why? Because God is opposed to the proud, to the arrogant, to the stubborn, to the foolish, to the idiot. <sighs> oh, man. But he gives grace to the humble. Gives grace to the humble. I'm not saying you can't have opinions. But submit your opinions to God. Trust him and pray for those that he's allowed to be in authority that they will make right decisions. And you know what? Even when they don't, I'm not upset because God's still in control. And never have I ever believed that God has been in heaven and said, oh, nuts, how did that happen? <laughs> no. He's in charge. He's in charge. If I didn't believe that, man, I'd, I'd be a mess. All right. What should be my attitude? It's the same as Christ Jesus, who humbled himself and became obedient to death on the cross. Do you think when the, when the eternal trinity first discussed what was going to happen, which I, I can't even comprehend how that worked, but do you think for a moment when the father said to the son, I want you to go down there and I want you to live with them and then go to the cross and let them spit on you. And do you think he said, wait a minute. Dad, are you crazy? No. That's perfect agreement. Perfect submission to die for you and for me. To do the unthinkable, heavenly speaking. But the only thing that can make it possible for me and you to inherit the kingdom of God. Well, okay, I guess I could stop and take an offering right now, but no, I won't do that. I belong, I, I, I think God wants us to be a belonging place. Making the family of God our passion. Accept one another just as Christ accepted you. And he did. And some of us are not exactly the most acceptable people sometimes. But he accepts us. Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment in disputable manners. You know, we're all going to have differences of opinion on things. I'll talk more about this in a minute. But treat each other with respect. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, Republican nor Democrat, American League, National League, Yankee, St. Louis, whatever. No, we're all one in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? We are. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away, Jesus said. 
spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And don't forsake the assembling together, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day of the Lord coming. Well, we should also be a serving place. And I, I appreciate the fact that this, I think, is a serving church. Serving our community and our abilities and resources. And God has given every one of us resources and abilities in our lives. Just how do we use them to make hard lives easier? Serve one another in love, Galatians 5 says. Each one should use whatever gift, spiritual gift, capacity, ability he's received to serve other people. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. That should be descriptive of us. It's not about me. It's about others. It's about what I can do for you, what we can do for those who don't even know they're in need yet. All the believers, it was, it was wonderful that when the early church got started in that chapter 2 of Acts, all the believers were selling their possessions and goods and they gave to anyone who had a need. And I don't think it was just the ones who were believers. I think it was anybody who was curious and came and wanted to know more. They embraced them. Every person, this is my longing for our church, every person has a place to serve and a place to belong. Years ago when I first coined that, and I coined it at my last church, I had some of our leadership well, should, say, well, shouldn't it be every person have a place to belong and a place to serve? And I said, no, you leave it like this. Because you know how you belong? is when you contribute and when you make a difference for all the rest of us. And when you serve and we say thank you for helping us, that's belonging. You know, when I was a kid growing up, I had a family. I had some chores. One of them was to mow the lawn. And, you know, that was my part, contributing to the family. That made me belong because I, I was part of the, the whole thing. That's how you belong. And that's what we try to create here. Well, it also needs to be a gracious place, treating every person with dignity, respect, and humility. I mentioned this a while ago. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Don't think you know it all, okay? And we're all just ordinary people. But none of us know it all, do we? Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. What does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Just one of my favorite verses. When I want to know, what does God want from me? There it is. And to walk humbly with my God, which means I'm going to treat you as a fellow child traveler with me. And right out of that comes what I call a safe place. It's a place that people can find a home, and, and, and they're going to feel safe here. And that's accepting all who come seeking his love and mercy. Religion that God our Father accepts is pure as this, to look after the orphans and the widows in their distress. In that day, these are the most helpless of society. That's who we are. It doesn't matter who walks in that door. To help them. Make them welcome. The only thing that counts is faith, expressing itself through love. Show hospitality to strangers, and I like this next part. Listen to it. You never know. You might be entertaining angels unawares. A joyous place. This is my favorite one. Loving God freely and enthusiastically. And I'm grateful that this church does that. They, they even laugh at jo Joby's jokes. I mean... <laughs> I have to say, I, I probably mentioned this before, in my very first church, when I went to it, they'd been through some hard times. And when I came, I mean, there wasn't any joy there. And, and you could always tell it, because when the choir sang, they just, a mighty fortress is our God. <laughs> I mean, there's no smiles, no nothing. And one Sunday... My six-year-old daughter, she's sitting next to Diane, and she says, Mom, did somebody die? <laughs> <laughs> well, in time, they learned to laugh. It took about five years to have them laugh spontaneously at my jokes, and they weren't bad jokes. <laughs> but, but, you know, truly, joy in the church, that, 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 that's just a natural outgrowth of the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not keeping the rules. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then listen to this next verse. Anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. When people see the joy in the church, it connects. The early church was praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the very next verse says, And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. All of those Jewish people that were gathered there in that temple area, many of them whom had cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Now they're seeing these believers and the joyfulness and the praise and, I mean, the, the exuberance and the spontaneity. They take notice. And who do you think were getting saved? Some of those very same people who said, crucify him. That's the way it works. I love what C.S. Lewis wrote in a book called Surprised by Joy. It's kind of his spiritual journey. And for years, he was an atheist, great professor at Oxford University and later at Cambridge. And he writes in his book about his own journey, a journey from becoming, being an atheist to being an agnostic to then being a deist, at least he believed in God, and ultimately to being a believer in Jesus Christ. And he wrote, joy was the single biggest thing that impacted him. Joy in believers' lives. And he said, joy is like a signpost to those lost in the woods pointing the way home. Do people see joy in your life? Do people see a smile? You know, the Holy Spirit bringing that through us, and I don't mean a bunch of giddiness and you know some ecstatic thing. I just mean... Hey, I know God's in charge, and I can be happy with that. When people see that, believe me, it makes an impact. I like what Lewis said. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven, so we might as well get practicing it right now, okay? Amen? All right. It's also, I want us to be a known place, and that, that means being a known as a place where God dwells. My fondest hope is when people walk in, not only do they see there's a joyfulness with them around us, they, they say, yeah, there's something there. God must be in that place. Jesus said, love one another, and by this people will know that you are my disciples. That's how we treat each other. And I love this passage. In 1 Thessalonians, the very beginning, when Paul's writing to the Thessalonian church, he says, in spite of severe suffering, you welcome the message with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And what was the result? He said, the Lord's message rang out from you. It trumpeted from you. It blasted from you. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, which is the northern part of Greece today where Thessalonica was, but your faith in God has become known everywhere. We become a known place when we allow the Lord to live in our lives and we treat people the way we do and we treat one another as brothers and sisters in Christ and there's a rejoicing. It all adds up to making this place somewhat. I, I, I'll use these words. And, and this is all the way back in the Old Testament. And it, it comes from when Jacob had to run from Esau after he tricked him out of his birthright. And he's running for his life and he comes to a place that he calls finally Bethel which means house of God. And you know the dream, and he has a dream of the ladder and the angels coming up and down, and God begins to confirm to him that I'm going to bless you and I'm going to keep my promise to Abraham through you. And when he wakes up, he says, surely the Lord is in this place. This is none other than the house of God, the gate of heaven. That's another one of my prayers. So when people come in here, the, the atmosphere and the joyfulness and the, and the exuberance and the, the, the beautiful demeanor and attitude of us, somehow it opens the door for that ladder from heaven to touch their heart. And when they walk out of this place, they say, wow, God touched me this morning. I think God spoke to me. This was the house of God. He's here. And that's what we're after, folks. Well, 
That's a lot to try to remember this morning, but I hope you filled them in. And uh, if you didn't get them all, you can watch the YouTube uh, thing. <laughs> okay. But what produces a focused church? Focused believers. A little eye chart of the focused church. And God gives us ten things. And here they are. We're, we're praying believers. God-dependent people. We believe that we're sent out to tell the story. We're growing. Growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Being more like him. Trusting believers. We're willing to submit to each other. Trust God that he will work through us and in you. Accepting believers. We treat people with grace and dignity. We're serving. We're gracious. We're caring. Making this a safe place for people to be. We're joyful. And finally, we're credible. We're credible. I always think of something else C.S. Lewis once said. He said, you know, the greatest advertisement for Jesus Christ is Christians. But he said, unfortunately, the worst advertisement is oftentimes Christians too. I hope we're the first. Getting your life in focus means whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Back to that opening statement I gave you a few minutes ago. A new year is an untarnished record awaiting the entry of our living. That record will reveal at year's end whether we gave life our best or whether we settled for second-rate living. There's another part I want you to see. Only the people who give it their best will find happiness, meaning, fulfillment throughout the year. Only the church that does that. Let's give it our best. Give your best, as the song says. Give of your best to the master. There's no other way than to do it his way. I like an old statement that goes like this. What's a saint? A saint is simply someone whose life makes people want to believe there truly is a God. I hope that's true of us. I hope it's true of you. I hope it's true of me. It's great to be back here with you. I'll tell you, when I'm away, yeah, you know, it's kind of nice to take a break, but I long to be back here and be with all of you. God bless you all. Pray with me, will you? Father, I thank you for this morning. Help us to be the kind of church, the kind of people, the kind of community of faith you want us to be. I thank you for the many, many ways I see that happening here. But don't let us rest on our laurels, Lord. As Paul said, not that I've attained it, but I, I continue to strive to reach up for that which God called me heavenward. Lord, help us to be all that you want us to be and all that you've empowered us to be. I pray that this community around us will know that this is just not a bunch of people playing church. Not a bunch of people who are huckstering Jesus. But it's a community of people who live like Jesus lived. And who give away the gift that Jesus gives. Meaning, forgiveness, hope, and peace. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the key to all of this, I think, is to, in the end, is to be able to say, Lord, you are Lord. And I want to invite you this morning just to sing with me that little song, He is Lord, because that's what it's all about. Why don't you stand with me? We'll conclude with singing that this morning.
come before you today and we tell you we love you we surrender to you and now will you lift up your eyes upon us and be gracious to us let your countenance fall upon each and every person here may the peace of god that passes all understanding truly guard in our hearts and our minds in christ jesus and may the world around us be able to say about this place yes god is in that place in jesus name we pray amen